last week? Who remembers what we talked about last week? We talked about little critters. What? The lizards. We talked about lizards and how some of them can make their you can make their throats get real big. It makes them look <coughs> really big. And and it makes them you know look scary. And others of God's creatures, like the cover, could do the same thing. And it's the way God made them so that they would have protection if they ever were in a fight, right? Well, I wanted to talk to you about another little critter. You see, some of these, we, we have um, geckos, or let's see, what are some of the other names for the little lizards that run around here? Skinks. Salamanders, what? Skinks. Skinks. Okay. Yeah, they're like on amphetamines, right? Okay. They're, they're really fast. If you try to get one, you ever been able to get one? No. But like, you know what happens if I heard somebody in our church had this happen. Their dog got a hold of one of these things. Totally got freaked out because guess what happened? The tail comes off. It does. And it'll sit there and it'll move back and forth for the longest time. And you know what? Do you know why God made them that way? So that, so that they'd be able to flee and there would be a distraction because sometimes, you know, other cre creatures pray, you know, they get distracted easily, you know. And so they get stuck on all of, you know, they get stuck on the tail. But the rest of the, the rest of the little, little, uh, okay, is able to, is able to escape. See, God has made every living creature in such a special way. I don't know, I've never asked for it. I don't know if it hurts him or not. It may just be one of those things. But I suppose just getting away from the prey is a pretty good thing. Now, I heard that something big is about to happen on Tuesday. That's Monday. Monday is what day? Labor Day. But what happens on Tuesday? School. And all the parents said... At Starbucks. <laughs> well, isn't that rude? <laughs> They're like that. Anyway, so, but you know what? You're getting ready to go back to school. And that's a pretty neat thing. And uh, I think you need to know that uh, God is going to be with you. And he's going to go ahead of you. Now, did any of you ever get worked up about first day of school? I have to tell you, I've got to be honest. When I was your age, I'd get so worked up. And I'd be concerned, oh my goodness, well, what about my friends? Where are there going to be bathrooms there? And then the most important thing is, when is lunch? You know, all of those things. But you know what? You need to just know that God is going to be with you. And he's going to protect you. And he's, he's going to go with you the entire time. The time you get on that bus, the time you are back in your mom's and dad's loving arms. And we as a congregation are going to have a word of prayer for you. And uh, are there any other students going back? How about teachers going back? All the teachers raise your hand. They're not ashamed to admit it. Homeschooler teachers, good, good. And uh, bus drivers, folks who work for the uh, administration, yeah, raise your little, little paws up in the air. We're going to have a prayer for all of you folks, okay? So gracious Lord, come now, Holy Spirit, and uh, be upon every student, every teacher, every bus driver, all the administration. Lord, the task of educating children and youth is so critical, so important for our society. We pray your anointing, your blessings of protection, but also, Lord, that these 
young ones, and all of our folks, teachers, administrators, whoever they are, would go into their places of school and that they would let their light shine before others, that they may see their good works and glorify their Father who is in heaven. And every place they go, they are claiming kingdom territory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, you come next Sunday, we'll have more stories, okay? God's blessings on you. <laughs>
that not everybody worships exactly the same way. And so to dictate and say, no, that's not worship. Worship has to be like this. Have you ever felt like that before? Oh, no, 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 that's not like, that's not real worship. Worship is like this. In the meantime, you can have folks coming at each other, you know, and it's kind of, you know, you, remember I had a friend of mine who worked at the Reese's Peanut Butter uh, plant in Hershey, Pennsylvania. That's a good friend to have, amen? <laughs> okay. I used to say, you know, I, I imagine after the first week, you're absolutely sick of smelling peanut butter and chocolate. And they go, no. <laughs> but it was so fun. And you remember those commercials where it's like, they'd have like the peanut butter person and the chocolate person, and they'd bump into each other, and what do they say? You got my peanut butter in your chocolate, or you got my ch your chocolate in my peanut butter. And the two of them start to go, wow, you know, this is, this is pretty good. Yeah, I'd love to be able to say, you know, you know and, and maybe you've said this. Hey, this is first service. Don't you dare be getting your contemporary worship into my service over here. How many of you know that's not what God's looking for? When the word says that the time has come and is now here, he's not looking for those who are going to rise up with some kind of religious spirit and say, oh, now you got your chocolate and my peanut butter. You got your contemporary worship in my, you know, in my traditional worship or vice versa. We don't need that traditional stuff. This is the, the praise and worship part of the whole thing. You know, but so it goes. You know, we have such diversity among us. And it's a joy when God's people come together and can worship God together. Are we always, because of our different personalities, going to be able to go like, oh man, I just love everything, you know, about this. Aren't there going to be times when you think about, think back upon the worship that you just experienced and go, wow, that really touched me. <coughs> you know, this part really touched me. But this part really touched me. Why is that? It's because all of our personalities are made in such a way. Our temperaments. There's a spirituality aspect to our temperaments and the way that God has made us. That some folks really are blessed by high liturgy. They, they, they give them the smoke and give them the ringing the bells. You know, give them, you know, you know smoking, smoking bells and they're happy. And they love the liturgy. And then there are those who maybe were there, and then they, they, you know, God's touched them in a new way, and a new part of their heart has so come alive, and they're like, wow, what's this, what's this praise and worship stuff? Wow, I really feel like I'm connecting at a whole new level. And the unfortunate thing is sometimes we look back, and, you know, at the past and go, you know, don't need that anymore, because I'm over here, and I got this, and I've got this new revelation. Well, maybe you do do that. But it's no need to look back and go, well, I was there. I was there. <laughs> no, over here. What's time I could just worship God with my hands in my pockets and that, you know, I didn't want anything to do with it, you know? And now I feel such a freedom. And I feel alive. Well, the truth of the matter is both are true. You can worship in both ways. And I'll tell you what, my journey in the Lord has brought me, you know, everywhere. I'm going to tell you, I tried a lot of different churches. Did I ever tell you that? I, I've been in a lot of different churches, worshiped a lot of different ways. I mean, I've been, you know, some folks ask me, you know, well, what are you? And I tell them I'm New Methyl Episcopal Bacterium Costa Catholic. <laughs> because I feel like I've had such a great experience in so many, so many Bible-believing churches, and it's been a part of my formation. The days are gone, folks, when 
Remember when, the, when they had these dyed-in-the-wool Lutherans and dyed-in-the-wool Catholics? Yeah? Uh, yeah? <laughs> i got to tell you, what we're seeing in the body of Christ, the diversity of Christ in action as we gather together, i got to tell you, if you came from a Methodist background, raise your hand when you see it. <laughs> they're not, then they're not ashamed to admit it. How about Catholics? <laughs> How about charismatic Pentecostal folks? <laughs> That's me too. All right. How about Presbyterians? Ah, it was foreordained. <laughs> There's... <laughs> That's a bad joke. <laughs> There's such a diversity, but the idea of being tied in the wool, everything. How about, let me just ask you this. How many blood-bought believers, sons and daughters of the Most High God do we have in the house today? And it's amazing because of our blood-bought sons and daughters of the Most High God, Sometimes we come from the, the background and the attitude of worship is entertainment. Like, do worship to me today, Pastor. I just can't take it, you know. <laughs> Pastor Timothy, just do church to me. You ever had that attitude? This is not the place where we are going to be entertained. You can get a lot better entertainment elsewhere. Not that we don't have a great praise and worship team and everything else. You got what I'm saying? This is the place where our hearts connect with God. Luther said this, to worship God in spirit is the service and homage of the heart and implies the love and fear of God and the trust in Him. Luther got it. I got to tell you, there's so much that came out of the Reformation. Luther had so much that he was on target. Yeah, there were times when he got, you know, off into some things, but I'll tell you what. His value of worship, this newfound relationship with Jesus Christ that had the power to change him and change all of it changed all of history. He became known as the father of evangelical hymnody, writing I don't know how many hundreds of worship songs. He'd go and he'd take the bar songs and he'd take scriptures and he'd put it to them and, and they would be able to sing those songs and hymns as they were gathered. And we have this idea that churches just happen here in these, you know, these, these walls right here, right? Luther's idea was that worship wasn't just what was done in the sanctuary when we come together, but it was who we are when we are scattered about in our homes. And so we have the small catechism that not only teaches us the things of God and things of Scripture, but it also leads us in the, the home altar, <coughs> the place of worshiping in our home. As I look back, and I look at what I see God doing in, among us in our church. I notice that there seems to be kind of like two kinds of songs that we sing. Sometimes we don't really think about We don't really think about these two kinds of songs. But there are songs about Jesus. We sing about Jesus. We sing about God. Kind of like in the third person. Right? But then there are also songs to Jesus. So we can be singing about God, but not necessarily singing to And my sense is that, you know, God gets something out of worship every time we gather together to worship. And that's one of the things that we fail to, fail to acknowledge and say, you know, <coughs> to God, was it good for you? And God says, oh yeah, it was great for me. I'd love more of it. Worship at home. 
affects the corporate setting. <laughs> I'm always so excited when I hear our folks say, you know, Pastor, I was listening to this, listening to K-Love, or, you know, in my car, or they tell me, you know, we're at home group, we're studying this, or I was studying and I was worshiping God. I love to hear that our folks are worshiping at God. You want to know why? <laughs> Because the worship that you engage in in home will affect the corporate worship as we gather together as a body of Christ. Anybody say amen to that? I'll tell you what. Folks walk through the door. They don't exactly always know, how did I get here? What, why am I, it just look like you're kind of like an average church. And they come in and immediately they just sense there's something different about this place. What you need to understand, folks who are new, maybe visiting, we always say the first time you're a visitor, after that you're family. family. That's right. That, that there should be a tangible, <coughs> evident presence when you come through that door. Why? Because we are setting an atmosphere of worship. And you get to go on and say, well, you know, there's nothing going on in that church or everything. Let me ask you a question. Tell me about your worship life at home. Tell me about your worship life in your car. Is there worship going on? Because I guarantee the church that is alive is the church that is worshiping at home. Where are our leaders of small groups. Put your hands in the air. Let me see them. Uh, they're proud of that. That's good. That's good. Can we just... So that, the reason why I applaud that is because it's something that we value here at Apostles is home fellowship groups. Because we really believe that's the number one place for folks to grow in their worship and grow in as a disciple. Of Jesus is home fellowship groups. So we encourage that. Home fellowship groups, we have resources. We're going to be getting together as leaders of home fellowship groups. I have some resources. If you're not already having worship times with your home fellowship group, I'm not going to, I'm like I would mandate that they can do that, right? I just want to make resources available to you so that as you come together as a home fellowship group, you have resources so that you can have praise and worship or however you want to worship in your home together on that level. I think that's so important. Another uh, shameless quote from Luther. <clears throat> the worship of God should be free at table. In private homes, downstairs, upstairs, at home, abroad, in all places, by all peoples, at all times. Don't you just love that? It was the ignition. Luther had that encounter and realized that the just are saved by grace, saved by faith through grace. It was it was just absolutely mind blowing. He went from a God who was vengeful and spiteful and ever holding him over the fires of perdition to understanding love in a father's eyes and an open arm, the open arms of Christ waiting to embrace him. His confessor said, Luther, God is not angry with you. You were angry with God. And healing and that whole aspect of worship. Well, one of the things we learned, and Dale told us about this in Psalm 100, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So that's good news for everybody who thinks they can sing. <laughs> Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. So that's a good thing. It takes us off the hook from being God and worshiping ourselves as God. Fulton Sheen spoke about that. But we need to understand that our worship blesses God. God is pleased as we gather together to worship. And we need to understand that worship is physical. It's important, you see, that our bodies are involved in what our spirits are saying. 
So, you know, in Scripture, this is accomplished. You may see it go on among us. To put it through the bowing of our heads or lifting our hands or kneeling and lying prostrate before God. And God are the days when we look at some and say, this is acceptable, but this is not. Because it's all an expression of the love and of adoration of God. Isn't it? And worship is communication. I knew I wasn't going to get through this message. Worship is communication. We don't worship God in order to be blessed, but we are blessed as we worship God. Because it's in this time that he visits his people with manifestations of the Holy Spirit. In other words, God shows up here among us. And that's what I like. And the other thing is, is, is he shows up. I want more of it. If you have ever had an encounter where you just came out of church, oh man, I encountered God in a new way. I want more of that. See, what it did was kind of like, you know, set a new high water mark. And I want to see more high water marks not necessarily from hurricanes, amen. <laughs> but, but I'll take tsunamis in the spirit every day. Where God shows up and we're there and we worship him and he shows us new things and he ministers to areas of our hearts that maybe are not in line with his. What a joy we have. So worship has a twofold aspect. Let me make sure I was putting up two fingers. First is communication with God through the basic means of singing and praying. And then communication from God through teaching, preaching the word, prophecy, exhortation. We lift him up and we exalt him. And as a result, we are drawn into his presence where he speaks to us. And then worship also, he comes to us and makes himself present. This is a God that is not content with long distance relationships, y'all. This is a God who is not content with, with weekend visitations either. See, he longs to hang out and make his place dwelling here among us, in us, all the time. So we receive Holy Communion. We welcome all who believe and trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior to receive from the table. We encounter Him as He comes to us in the breaking of bread and sharing together in the Holy Cup. I want to close with this from Psalm 18.1 because this is a, a I want to define Worship. Okay, ready? Worship's about going to church. What? I can't pull anything over on them. Worship is the act of freely giving love to God. Psalm 18, 1 says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. And Psalm 95 says, Worship is also an expression of our awe and our submission and respect toward God. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. What's the definition of worship? Worship is the act of freely giving love to God. I heard a story just as I was coming in here. I heard that the Navy was playing. Who was Navy playing yesterday? Steelers? <laughs> Come on, be proud. Who was it? Florida. 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 Yeah. <laughs> they were losing. Who saw the game? Watch the Buckeyes, sorry. I watched Penn State, so I'm sorry. They were behind.